All right, now that we have our type form created, we're gonna log into SharePoint site as Emily Brown. A uh, couple of things here. She is logged into this site with edit permission levels. Uh, this could also work with contribute permission levels within the site, uh, SharePoint uh, security model actually. Uh, but I chose edit uh, permission level just so that she can create the registration form as a SharePoint list. Uh, contribute per uh, permission level from SharePoint out of the box does not provide that level of uh, uh, access. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and quickly create a SharePoint list called registration and we're gonna going to match the um, same columns that we created in the type form earlier, right? Let's go ahead and give this a name. Registration. Registration form for demo. Yeah, I'm going to click create. Once this pops up, I'm going to make some changes. Right. We're gonna go to list settings. We're gonna change the title. We're gonna capture email in the title and make sure it's unique. I'm gonna call this email. All right. Require and force unique values. Now, when I'm doing this, what will happen is if somebody uh, with the same email registers twice, that data will not get registered and you will see a failure in the uh, run section when you create the flow. We'll, we'll look into that later as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK at this point. There you go. We're gonna quickly create other columns as well. We're going to mostly keep the type of uh, information in this column as single line of text for most of our uh, options. I'm just trying to match this exactly as what I had typed in within my type form, remember? So require this value, absolutely. So that's what I did Over there. All right. Now the presentation here doesn't matter because we're just collecting data here, not uh, having the end user type that. All right. So phone number and single line of text. This would be what is your phone number. And over here, um, this was not a required field. So I'm going to skip that part. We're going to come to another column called company this time All right single line of text again which company do you work for question mark and this we definitely want as required I'm gonna click OK and our next would be the job title next column job title this was not required what is your current job title again SharePoint doesn't allow picking responses from other columns so we're gonna leave the description as is we're gonna collect the country name now Remember in the type form, I, I chose uh, country as a, a drop down uh, data type, but here I'm just gonna leave it like this because it's a text form that is coming from the form. So I'm ingesting data over from there, so I don't need to worry about what comes in here because it'll be filtered uh, in a way from uh, that drop uh, down list that I already created in type form. Which country? Or you from? Oops, I tend to do that a lot. Form from, and for country, it is definitely a required field. Now, if you don't match any of these settings with the type form, uh, especially with the required fields, and somebody misses that in type form, and and the data comes in, 
it will throw an error that particular uh, flow run will come up as failed so make sure you uh, keep that in mind all right so I'm gonna do city here and which city do you belong to and uh, this is definitely not required click OK and the last but not the least terms and conditions and this is a little bit tricky uh, usually if you were doing this all within SharePoint and not using type form you would literally go ahead and use uh, a yes or no checkbox but not in this case uh, terms and conditions in this case I'm still gonna use single line of text now what is happening in the back end when the data is coming from type form we'll see um, a little bit later when we do the test it is actually sending a zero out of one so either I could use a number here to do the differentiation but again single line of text will suit much better for indexing purposes uh, within the SharePoint environment so I'm gonna keep it to that and um, for whatever business logic you want the a yes or no it will still work with a single line of text uh, for uh, many reasons we with our terms and conditions all right, and this is definitely a required field, so there has to be a value. I'm not gonna put any default value at this time. Uh, click OK. All right, so basic configuration is done. That took me hardly a couple of minutes to create the form, a couple of minutes to create this, uh, but again, if you're doing this from scratch, you might need to uh, uh, get a site created where you want this to be set up for you that's why that 20 minutes is coming I'm gonna show you to do it in much less than that there are some prerequisite to even uh, uh, with all the prerequisite this will just take around 20 minutes to get you done from end-to-end -end scenario alright so once our registration list is set up we are gonna see that there is no data in this at this point alright there's nothing to show here so um, I can go ahead and create a flow from here as well but I'm gonna go to flow.microsoft.com at this point and if you're using flow for the first time for your uh, office 365 uh, organization ID that you log in with uh, you should be clicking on sign up free and then follow the process it's a one minute process uh, otherwise you can go ahead and click sign in once I do that I'll be signed into Microsoft flow as Emily Brown alright so once I am there I can simply go ahead and click on my flows and start creating the flow that I want to right oh well this is already there so I'm gonna quickly delete this this was from my previous test so I'm gonna start with creating a blank flow all right and the first service that I want to use is my type form now remember I've done a little bit of testing here so I'm not being asked about uh, a particular uh, API key that comes within this I'm not sure why that first letter is not coming up here but anyways so when you click this for the first time in your type form account you need to go to your account settings and 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 add another API key that will connect that together with this particular uh, um, flow all right so do that and then when you do that you'll be able to drop down and find whatever forms you have within your account uh, from there so here I'm gonna select the registration form this is coming from a type form account that we saw earlier in the previous video and there are a lot of uh, things you can do here I can either uh, add an action add a condition and and do a lot more but for this purpose demonstration all we have to do is add an action and pick SharePoint from the list of services and it'll give you what all actions you can take on this so in our case we want to take the response when it is submitted in a type form and create an item out of it right so I'm gonna go ahead and click that I'm gonna select which list I'm going to do uh, well before I do that let's go ahead and copy the URL of the site here alright now remember uh, this URL is of uh, the site collection and I created this list within the root of this site collection uh, this list could live in a, a, a first level, second level, or a third level subsite. Those who know SharePoint know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, all you need to do is uh, copy the URL of the list 
sorry of the SharePoint site and paste it here once you do that you can have all the registration uh, all the list and document libraries that you can take action on in this case we created a registration list that's where we're gonna uh, put all our data in now this is where the magic happens it automatically picked all the columns that I created over there and all I need to do now is match the data that is coming from uh, the type form to this so it's just one click there one click here and you are good to go with right so country which country are you from terms and conditions right here phone number your job title and then which city are you from right all right so it was that simple and if you want to double check you can see uh, your email is uh, linked with the email name is linked with name company is linked with company country with country terms with terms phone number job title and city and that's it we are done this is all that is required to set up this whole process created an anonymous registration form using type form created the flow at a click of a button well actually a few buttons but you see how simple this is right all right now we're gonna do our testing so I'm gonna quickly go ahead and um, bring in the URL of the form and we're gonna type in some data and see how this whole thing works right so let's go ahead and type in some dummy data let's say I am John um, right and then my email is John at John dot me um, my phone number is seven three two five 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 I work for Contoso all right and then my current job title is a, a software developer well all right and then which country I am going to say I am from you us all right well this is all the list that was there so United um, Kingdom uh, which city do you belong to London uh, and I'm gonna click yes at this point and this is where it gives me the option to submit it all right now when this action is triggered is also very important to understand how this happens so when this form is created the trigger is not something that will happen right away so even though the flow says that it will trigger when an item is submitted uh, there is a, 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 a little bit of lag so what I'm gonna do at this point is um, I'm gonna pause this uh, uh, video and we're gonna come back when an item is actually created within SharePoint so just to show you uh, we just submitted it I'm gonna refresh this and show you that the item is still not here so it's not spontaneous within a couple of seconds it takes actually within two to three minutes that's what I've seen in the past with my testing and uh, if you click on this little eye icon over there you can see all the previous flows that you've created and how they ran basically so there's nothing right now because I deleted all the other test um, flows that I created so let's come back when we have our data ready okay all right we have our result here you can see the success six seconds ago and you can see even the duration of how long this flow actually ran for so you see there is a timestamp that you can see exactly when this ha happened uh, when a response is submitted zero seconds created time two seconds for the flow to run specifically all right let's see here we're gonna do a refresh and see all the magic happen the data from type form which an anonymous user fed in is available to me in SharePoint and the list which is a secured list so here you go let's check all the data that we submitted right so I have my email my name my phone number company job title country 
terms and conditions as I told you it'll be either 0 or 1 depending on what's uh, coming in from uh, type form and that's how you're gonna uh, you know you can still use it in workflow in whatever way you want to automate any process so there you go less than 20 minutes because I had all the basics and the uh, back end set up uh, beforehand but um, as you can see it's a very powerful thing uh, you can use in your organization if you're a power user and have access to these tools so a combination of Typeform, SharePoint, Microsoft Flow uh, is able to give you a very simple and a robust solution. And this can be used as an info platform replacement as well going forward. Thank you.